Okay, so we're about to do an epilay sec, which is also called epilay sick. Um, I've tried to get people to call it epilay sec because it's really like a lay sec if you think about it. We're not cutting into the cornea. Um, this is the epikeratome that's being applied to the eye. Uh, there's a little suction ring. You could see I have to increase the width of the speculum to get the thing in there. Um, it's a little bit smaller than a lay sick keratome, so it's easier for people with narrow eyes like Asians like myself. Um, this sucks onto your eye. During the procedure, you would feel a little bit of pressure. It doesn't hurt. I had this also myself on a lay sick, which, you know, sucks onto the eye harder because it needs to be harder on a lay sick. This is like a plastic separator that's now skidding across the cornea. Because it's plastic and blunt, it's not actually sharp enough to go into the cornea. So it's safer than a lay sick because a lay sick, sometimes you get a bad flap. If you get a bad flap, it's a problem as the surgeon and I guess the patient too because we don't have synthetic cornea. So we would just be stuck with the cornea we have, which would be abnormal because of a bad cut. Um, so this, is, again, is a surface ablation. That means we're, uh, ablation means the laser uh, application. So we're lasering the surface of the eye. We just have to take the skin of the eye off. Otherwise, we would be lasering off the skin of the eye. Some of the laser energy would be wasted evaporating the skin, and then you would basically wind up with an undercorrection. So we have to take off the skin of the eye to access the cornea, which is the front clear window of the eye, and that's what we want to be changing the shape of with the laser. At the end of the, all these procedures, laser vision correction, we're just changing the shape of the cornea so it's got a different curvature afterwards, and then we're matching it up to the curvature of your glasses or contacts, so then you have built-in glasses or contacts, and then you wouldn't need them because you know we just made the cornea light glasses or contacts. I think I'm just waiting for this guy to stop looking around so I can take the skin of his eye off. So you can see the skin's basically uh, heaped up in the center. Um, I'm going to go to high magnification so I can see a little bit better. It's a little decentered because I could see more in the microscope than you could see in the camera. But you see basically it's a very quick process. That little thing I used was a spatula. The reason we're calling it a spatula is it's blunt, like the separator. So it can't go into the cornea. I remember one of the patient's uh, friends watching this, we have a companion, was saying, oh, is there any way that you could go into the cornea by mistake? Now, the answer is no, because both the uh, spatula and the separator, are, they're blunt. You can't even go into the cornea if you wanted to. That's why it's safer than LASIK. And then basically, I'm just centering the eye, turning on the iris registration, which is capturing the iris landmarks. And now the laser is going off. You can see the ultraviolet light. Um, from the patient's point of view, it's kind of like a blue light. It's actually similar to uh, a bug light and a little bit more uh, high frequency. And then you hear a little bit of noise. So this is basically the laser taking off the prescription in real time. It takes about 10 seconds per diopter. So if your prescription in context is like, let's say, minus 2.5, it's going to take about 20 seconds. And that's pretty much the description of epilasic or epilasec. Again, it's non-cutting. And you can see the skin comes off so atraumatically that there are no skin cells that die on the cornea, and that's why it's really totally painless afterwards. We don't put the skin back anymore. I used to put the skin back like 10 years ago, and then we did some studies showing that if you take the skin off and leave it off, you get new skin quicker. We've done radioisotope labeling where we actually uh, label the uh, cornea epithelium. And if you take off the skin, the body senses you don't have any skin, grows back in two or three days, just like if you cut yourself on your hands or something like that. If you put the old skin back, even though it's back, it's not really that normal skin. And then it takes like a month for the new skin to grow back because your body's like not sensing that you need new skin. So I would say every cornea specialist uh, in the world who's doing epilasic, epilasic now is basically following our lead and just leaving the skin off and letting it grow back. Okay, it's still not a PRK, which we're going to narrate next. So you can see it's like a very, very clean edge. When you look at the edge of the uh, cornea uh, epithelium junction, it's totally clean. And that's why it grows back so quickly and there's no pain. Okay, the, the patient's looking around now, but it really doesn't matter because the laser's done. Okay.